we did off in the distance. Doesn't have to be the most enormous mountain back here. Just a little peaker. Maybe he's up here. He comes up and peeks out, goes over that side, a little thing. Doesn't all have to be the craziest, biggest mountain you've ever seen. Every time that you do it, you can do little guys too. Off in the distance, feed him down, zip, zap, zoop, feed him down. Bang, a little bit more of our paint. Boom, 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 pull it down in different directions. And that way we'll have this soft little mountain out here in the distance, be very cool. <clears throat> now we'll take a one inch brush. You can either use a Bob Ross brush or a paint with Bram one inch brush. Take this guy over here and just slide it, right? All based off of our pressure. How far are we gonna push the paint? How far does it go? What if we pull it in this other direction? Make it a little ridge right down the center, right? Your mountain starts to look a certain way. Maybe you got a little valley in between those guys right there. Or this guy comes off the other direction and pulls down this way, and you can even make it a bit darker just so it stands out. Now it's almost like there's a little bowl back in there. That's pretty cool. It right? doesn't always have to look the same. Get your darkness, create that little shape. We got our little valley inside. It's kind of neat looking. We'll see what, it's like a little half pipe back there. We'll see what we can do. Maybe Sean White's gonna come in and snowboard on it. That'd be really neat. That'd be really neat, actually. <laughs> okay, now we'll come up here. We'll grab this guy, pull him down a touch this way. Pull them off this way. Don't have to go all the way to the edge. You never do. I used to think that you had to all in the beginning. I was like, oh man, you gotta go all the way off the edge of the canvas with your mouth. No, you really don't. You don't want it to be like that. You wanna stay away from the edges because then we're gonna continue to add stuff the more closer that we get to us. You see what my hand just did? From here, the closer that we get to us, the more it goes to the right of the canvas. That's called perspective, guys. Now we'll come in here, grab up a little bit of our white, a little bit of our blue. Just a little touch, don't need much. Mix it up. Then we need a little touch of that darkness as well. Because you gotta have some of that deep dark color just to help it go a little dull grayish colored, a little grayish bluish. Take this guy and who knows, we've had all of our light coming from the right in some of these scenes. So let's go, uh, or yeah, sorry, light from the left. So let's go light from the right and put our shadows on the left in this case. All right, over here, grab it up little pressure as we drag it down, pick it up, drop it down in different places. You can do whatever you want to do. A little bit of shadowing back behind this guy as he was under there, this whole little ridge, and have a deep shadow underneath him. You just take that blue paint, let it drag off your knife. Whatever angles that you're pulling is the angle that it's going to look like, right? Now we'll come back, we'll grab a little bit of our white paint and a little bit of that blue that we mixed up, and that way it's not a perfectly white white, right? It's not the purest white that we can get. It's very, very, very light blue colored. And that way it'll stand out as white against all of these other colors back here. Start whipping down your little mountain. Look at that ridge. Wicked cool. Pull it down however you want it to be. Let it break off like that. Very neat. Back into our little valley. It's not always going to be the same. Bingo, bango, you, you don't even have to cover everything. Leave some of that little section back in here, that original deep dark part of our mountain. It's just a shadow. It's the shadows out there, guys. And that side got a little lit up right along the edge. All right, now we need to go back and make up some more snowy bits. So we'll get a little bit more of our white paint, mix it up with that little bit of blue, just like that, all over the place. And then come back over here, grab it up, slide it out all based on our pressure off of that knife, right? You don't have to have it be the most insane light pressure or hard pressure, right? Everyone's pressure is gonna be different. Like when you say hard pressure or light pressure to every, they're all, everyone's all gonna have a different interpretation of what that is. So you have to figure out what is your light pressure, how lightly can you touch the canvas and what happens, right? And then what happens when you touch the canvas too hard or you put on too much paint. You gotta figure this stuff out. You're never gonna just know it all. Right? You gotta practice, you gotta try some different things. Watch the Paint With Josh videos for sure, that's vital. If, you don't, if you're not watching Paint With Josh videos, I don't know what you're out there doing. Get over there and watch all the stuff on TikTok, all the stuff on YouTube and Facebook. I've got videos everywhere. Look at that beautiful little mountain scene out there. Gorgeous, guys. Just gorgeous. 
So, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite Halloween candy? And we'll see. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Just like that. Some gross, warm, flat Pepsi. Excellent. Warm, flat Pepsi. Perfect. <laughs> Let me wash off some of these brushes. Actually, you know what? Before we wash off the brushes, we'll come in here and we'll soften this bit of paint since it's just going to get paint on it again. And all I'm doing is dragging in the opposite direction very lightly, right? Very light, barely even. Look how I'm holding the brush. Just so light. So I'm just kind of kind of allowing it to drag like we do with these guys. Just very light so you're not pushing the paint, right? You're not trying to move the paint. You're just trying to touch it. And as we touch it, it's going to start to fade it a little bit. Get a little bit blurrier, a little harder to see. And that's what happens with the mountains. They're far away. You're not going to see every single little detail in perfect, clear crispness. You have to soften it a little bit. By doing that, we make it look a little bit more realistic and we create it an easier spot for our next layer of paint and our next layer of paint and our next layer of paint as it comes down. Very cool. What do you guys think of that mountain? He's a cutie. He's a little cutie. He's a cute little mountain. We're going to come up here maybe with the same brush. You know what we do? Grab a little bit of our white onto the brush and then kind of tap in our mist, right? And we're starting to work like a typewriter. So we tap down, we come back up. Tap down, we come back up. Bam, 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 bam. Now that we're down in here, we really don't need much more paint because we can grab all of that stuff and intermix it, right? Going down like this and then around. It's all about those angles. We're creating more land, just like a clock. Out to the side and then down, 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 down. So that means if we come over to this side, we need to be tapping and tapping and tapping and going out to more about nine o'clock about here. Turning the brush, rotating it all the way around. See what I mean? It's not just about tapping it straight up and down across the whole thing. Then you're gonna have a really straight mountain. That's not cool. Just like that. Swipe up, soften it, boom! 